Hi, I'm Doug Bowles, president of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Thank you for listening to Behind the Bricks. We're excited to bring you this exclusive and entertaining content about the world's greatest racetrack. Keep listening, and I hope you enjoy this episode. Indianapolis Motor Speedway fans, Doug Bowles here with you for another episode of Behind the Bricks. Right behind me, Gasoline Alley. This is the place that the drivers and the teams, when they're getting ready to compete at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, they roll right through here. And you know one thing they don't worry about? They don't worry about safety and rescue teams here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And part of the reason is because of the training that goes into making sure that those rescue folks are ready for anything that happens on the track. Today, we're going to take you behind the scenes and see how our rescue folks get trained by NASCAR, IMSA, and IndyCar to make sure our drivers are safe. So I'm on pit lane standing next to Jason Pinnix. Jason is our director of everything operations on track here at the Speedway, whether it's working with our sanctioning bodies like NASCAR or IndyCar, or even just a track rental day when something happens. But when any of those things happen, we have to have track rescue here. So that entire team reports to Jason. It's a pretty big day every year when you bring people out and get them trained to take care of our drivers. Yeah, it's a fantastic weekend. We've got about 125 men and women that are part of our IMS track rescue recovery team that are here uh, training on everything that is racing here at the Speedway. So you bring in experts and others to really help work through the different stations they'll go through today. Yeah, so IndyCar, NASCAR, and IMSA are all here supporting us, teaching us uh, best practices and training specific to their series. So one of the things we take a lot of pride in, obviously the AMR crew that goes with the IndyCar series and NASCAR as well, but we take a lot of pride in how quickly and how good our people are that are here every single day. Yeah, and I think, you know, we run 130, 140 track days a year, so we get a lot of practice at it, right? Do you mind if we go check out some of these things? Let's do it. That's great. So we're going to go see how these guys get trained so that our drivers know they're safe on track. So during this weekend training, what's really important is for the fire rescue groups to get out here and get an opportunity to encounter some of the scenarios that they might actually see when they get to the racetrack if there's an incident. So what are some of those scenarios that are playing out here over the weekend? Uh, we're looking at IndyCar, NASCAR, and IMSA scenarios. Uh, with IndyCar, we're doing crash scene, multi-crash scenes. Um, NASCAR, we're doing cut car, driver extraction. Um, IMSA, we're doing um, how do we handle their car specifically um, with the GTP car. Right. Uh, so those are very specific things we have to learn. And then the final probably most exciting thing right behind us here is a pit lane fire scenario. I feel something getting warm already. Me actually. too. Oh yeah so we do have so we got a fire going there and then the groups try and rescue that and put that fire out. Yeah so we you know over the years we've had some pit lane scenarios that we've had to fight fire and so that's important for us right we have all the crew members that are on pit lane we need to protect them and get that fire put out immediately. So Jason and I are an awful lot calmer today than we would be if this was an actual fire but you can see the teams are getting trained to get those fires put out so if something happens here in pit lane we can take care of not just the drivers but the crews. So Jason mentioned one of the scenarios is an IndyCar scenario that takes place on the racetrack. I'm here with Dr. Visor. You guys know Julia Visor. She is the head of all the medical here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and for the NTT IndyCar Series. And this is a pretty cool opportunity for folks to have a real-time experience with what they might encounter on track. That's correct. So today we're simulating essentially a scenario where we have so many injured or flipped over cars and the resources are a scats in that situation. We don't, we don't, we don't have enough. And every single driver that is being simulated is an actual real life scenario. We have had every single one of those drivers play out in real life. So we want to give our teams an opportunity to experience and practice what it's like when you have loud noise of the racetrack, where you can't hear each other, when you have so many screaming and injured drivers. Some of them just want to get back out to racing. Some of them are critically hurt. How do you decide who's who, especially if there's only a few of you? And you have some cards that help, help identify that so that when a, a medic gets there they can say this is a red yellow or green that's correct so there are so many different triage systems that exist for outside of racing world but our fellow dr leonard edwards who is working with us in motorsports medicine fellowship is working on de developing a triage system that would be specific for a world of motorsports and would be applicable to any racetrack out there in the world so what he's what we're using is uh, the cards to triage our drivers so the green one means minimal this is a driver who is okay maybe they have a minor injury but they're going to be okay. We have a yellow one who is delayed. They do have more of an injury, but this is not life-threatening and it can definitely wait, especially when you have very few resources. We have a red card. This is somebody who needs an immediate attention. Think about somebody who's bleeding out, but you can stop that bleeding out and give them a second. 
We have a gray one. This is somebody who's really, really, really hurt, and we're worried that they're not going to make it. We have a black card for somebody who has already passed away. You know, obviously, we don't want to have any of those, but it's a pretty neat system. And we've already heard through this process, a lot of our track safety people feel like this may have been the most important thing they've ever done. This is brand new, and Dr. Edwards really helped develop this. He did. He has presented it uh, at an international conference at the ICMS. He has validated it with our, with our IndyCar safety team, and now we have opportunity to put more than 100 people of our safety track response and EMS uh, workers here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. You know, fans, we take an awful lot of pride in when we see those rescue crews from the NTT IndyCar Series get to drivers really quickly. Now you know how they have to think through when they see multiple cars and they just have a few people to get there and rank where they need to go first and make sure that we take care of the folks that need it most critically. With all of the cars, the different kinds of cars that compete at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, it's important that our fire rescue team has an opportunity to see and understand those cars before they get here. IMSA's GTP car, NASCAR's cars, Indy cars. So that's one of the things they do. Over my shoulder right now, that's the current generation NASCAR car. NASCAR sends some folks in, really help our team understand how to tow those cars, how to extricate drivers, the things to look out for in those cars if they encounter them on the racetrack. The other thing that they really need to know is how do they keep themselves safe when they're on the racetrack? track. As you're extricating a race car driver, you want to be focused solely on that race car driver. So you don't want to worry about anything that goes on on the racetrack that could incur your safety. So one of the things we do is a big blocking maneuver. So we teach folks that drive the vehicles to really understand how to block so that the rescue crew is safe when they're on the racetrack. And that happens right out here on the racetrack with a car, with ambulances, with fire rescue trucks. That all happens right here on the track so that everybody knows how that they can be safe. So I'm actually sitting at the bus gate, right in between turns one and two on the south side of the racetrack. This is where a lot of the rescue equipment gets sent out when there's an incident on track. I'm actually sitting right here on the little red truck named Clifford, and I got Joe Barbrich with me. Joe is in charge of all our fleet. He works in race control, has been with us for quite a while, and we're standing here next to Clifford, the little red truck. This is one of the items that I think a lot of our fans really think is cool. It's been with us since 2003. Absolutely. It's a Chevrolet S10 Extreme 2003. It's been in the fleet with IndyCar and IMS since 2003. Uh, spent its time as Safety 3 uh, until 2006 and then made its home uh, here at IMS ever since. What's this truck actually do? So here in the back, we've got the ability to just kind of blow stuff off the racetrack. Absolutely, yeah. It's a pretty unique piece of equipment. So it's got a buffalo blower in the back, right. an oil dry broom uh, here at the bottom. And it really helps with those incidents where we're cleaning up the racetrack. So it'll blow oil dry off the track, grab off the track and small pieces of debris. And it's actually pretty cool inside after for a 20 plus year old truck. The inside looks really great. We got Clifford's name on the side of it. And it's one of the things I think, uh, you know, our fans really love the wheels. Obviously, you got to have an engine that works. So the Chevrolet engine continues to power this thing. How long do you think we keep this in the fleet? Well, it's just hit over 10,000 miles, almost all track used miles. So it's going to be with us for a long time. It's something that makes IMS so unique to our fans, and, and it, it'll be on the track helping us out as long as it can. And we've got a shirt for Clifford now. Absolutely. You can get your own Clifford t-shirt. Uh, pretty unique piece of merch from our merch store. So this is a pretty unique piece of our track rescue equipment, but one that serves an essential purpose. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. This is what we do in the spring to get our team ready to make sure that when cars are on track at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, if there's an incident, everybody's safe. This truck, 10,000 miles on it, it's going to be here an awful lot longer than I am, I'm sure, and it's probably going to be around for a lot more behind the bricks. Until next time. Thank you, fans, for listening to this episode of Behind the Bricks. We look forward to bringing you more exciting content about the Indianapolis Motor Speedway soon.